Okay, we need two things for this project. We need an image of a pumpkin and a pattern to use for the carving. So we'll start with the pumpkin. I want um, something large. Okay. Go ahead and copy it, switch over to Photoshop, and create a new image. You'll see it's the exact size of what's on the clipboard. Paste it in. Okay, we head back over to Google, and we need a pumpkin carving pattern. Actually, I know where to get this from, so I'm going to head on over to this. And there's a place called spookmaster.com. Right here. Um, click on the free patterns. And Bewitching Hour is here. Click on that, then you'll get this. And you can just click and drag this on to your Photoshop image. Let's arrange this. First thing I want to do is flip this. And scale it. Okay. Let's isolate this from the background. Good enough. Let's go back to normal. Choose the magic wand. Oh, I have a tolerance set for about 90. Hold down the shift key and click on all the gray regions because these are the parts you want to carve out. Okay. apply this mask and I'm going to duplicate this image. Hold down the option key, click and drag to a new position and you'll get a duplicate. Um, hold down the option key, click and drag on the mask and drag it onto this. You need to invert the mask. There we go. Let's expand this. Double click on the layer to call up the layer styles and we're going to do an inner glow. And we're going to change this to... Start with hard light. Move that up to 100%. Click on this and drag this down. That's looking pretty good. And let's use that. Okay, it's good enough. Uh, we're going to click, right click on this and create a layer. Alright, hold down the option key, bring this over here, let's take a look at this. I'm going to erase everything on the outside of this. Like that. And I'm going to copy this mask down onto it and invert it. Okay, perfect. Alright, and we need one more layer. So we'll hold down the option key, click and drag down like that. Um, hold down the command key and click on the layer to isolate uh, the mask area. Let's pick a solid color. 
This is good. Okay. Hold down the option key, hit delete. Alright, that'll be your inside the pumpkin background. You can delete this layer now. And then save this as Okay, before we go uh, over to motion, we need to uh, apply these masks. Just right click on the mask and select apply mask. And then let's verify what we got. Okay, we have a background. We have the foreground. And let's just go ahead and name these while we're at it because the names will show up in motion. Let's get the background. foreground we have the carved and we have the Bernian overlay okay I just select all of those and go ahead and save this back out Okay, and I'm going to switch over to motion. I'll be right back. Okay, we're in motion now, and uh, head on over to our file browser. And I've already located our Photoshop project, and I'm going to click and drag it into the canvas, and I'll hold it down and import all layers. And I'm going to move out and resize this down a little bit. Uh, with the option and shift keys I can scale this down like this and move it up a little bit okay I'm going to go ahead and add a new camera and switch to 3d okay we need to start laying this out for the motion effects and uh, there's this thing you can do in motion where let me change the views here right view. I need to change this to perspective. There we go. Uh, where you can select a layer, say the background, and uh, as far as I know this only works using the HUD or the heads-up display and um, I have to select the active camera here and then the um, the active camera view and then the layer I want to move and hold down the command key and if I move it back or forward you'll see that it the layer will scale proportionally to the its perspective okay so that the layer will seem to be, no matter where it is in Z-Space, it will seem to be the same size to the camera. Now you notice that in the active camera view that it's actually moving up and down. And that has to do with the anchor point. We're going to fix that in a minute, so let me undo this. So to prepare this uh, for this kind of uh, animation, uh, we're going to uh, show the rulers and create guideline here. This should be zero and zero there. And then for each one of these, I'm going to use the anchor point tool. And I'm just going to drag these to the center. If you hold down the command key while you drag, you can fine tune uh, the position here. So now that we have the anchor point set up, go back to the perspective view here and take our background and uh, hold down the command key and you'll see in the top active camera view you cannot see the motion of the background as it's moving back because perspective 
with respect to its perspective, it is exactly the same size visually as the foreground layers. So I want to move this back a little ways here. And uh, we'll have the space for inside the pumpkin for the light and the flame here. Okay, I want to do the same thing for the foreground layer, except this time I want to keyframe the motion. So I'm going to um, move to where I want to start the animation. And uh, in the inspector, I'm going to uh, hold down the option key and click on this to create a keyframe here. And then I'm going to move forward in time to where I want the animation to end, about a second or so and hold down the option key and click this keyframe again. Now making sure that this active camera view is selected when I do this little trick here and just click up here you'll see the um, yellow outline around the current camera view and make sure the foreground is selected hold down the command key and dolly this out and to about the background to about right there that's good all right now the, the problem i encountered doing this uh, for animation is that i wasn't able to keyframe the scale so i've got the scale you notice it's scaled up about ten percent and so i'm going to hold down the option key and set the keyframe there. Then I'm going to go back to the previous keyframe by holding down the option key and typing the K key and then setting another keyframe and resetting this to 100%. Like that. And then everything lines up just fine. Uh, in my experiments I wasn't able to make that work automatically with the um, command drag on the um, Z plane layer positions icon here. So I just had to go back and do it manually. Uh, I was able to set the keyframe for the second one where it was, and now you'll see uh, in time as it goes back, it's going to change size. Okay, and you'll notice in the active camera view that you cannot tell it's moving at all next thing we want to do is um, apply an extrude to this carved layer carved view get rid of this uh, add filter stylize extrude to save some time I'm going to give you some settings that are a good starting point for this project I'm going to set this to 90 set this to 11. I'm going to set this to 96. We're going to move this to 0 0.9. 1.0. 1.24. And 1.81. I'm going to set this to a gradient, turn this down, this color will be um, 0 0.9, 0 0.83, 0 0.16, this color will be 1, 0.44 37 I'm going to do a color in the middle, click here create a new patch and this one will be 1 97 0.97 
will be 1. Okay. And this will be 0.79. Okay. 